What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Joanna here, founder and CEO of Subwell. Today I'm reviewing one of the best, most slept on, hiding in plain sight, but under the radar running shoes out there. It is the Nike Pegasus. I have the 39 right here. I honestly don't know how this doesn't get as much praise as it deserves because this thing is an absolute beast. I'll get into my full thoughts in a minute, but right off top, I think this deserves consideration as one of the best daily trainers out there. It ticks all the boxes for me. It's nailing it for where I am in my training right now. And I think more runners should be pulling for this and not those max cushion behemoths that were getting shoved in our faces so much recently. All right, let's get into it. So overview of the Nike Pegasus. This is a long running shoe from Nike. It's in the 40th version. I have the Peg 39 here. It's same thing as the 40, just a minor upper difference. It has a midsole of React foam with a 33 millimeter heel stack, 23 millimeter forefoot stack for that classic 10 millimeter drop. And it comes in at 9.4 ounces, which if you think about performance running shoes, tempo running shoes, it's on the heavier side, but, but it's right in the middle between those lightweight, faster shoes and those max cushion shoes would tend to be in that 10 ounce range. Now this comes in at a price of 130 or 140, depending on which colorway you get, but you can often find it on sale for under $100. I would not pay more than $100 on this if I'm considering it if I were you, because there's tons of deals on both the 39 and the 40 across the web if you look in the right places. At a high level, this is a do-it-all type of shoe. The foam isn't too soft, it's not too firm, and it has a geometry that's as friendly and agreeable for running as it is for non-running activities like walking, gym work, and casual wear. So the midsole here is that React Foam. I had another Nike shoe with the React Foam, that Epic React 2 a few years ago that I absolutely loved. That Epic React is one of the first running shoes that I really took to using heavily. This React is a bit different. It feels like it compresses a little bit more than that other React and is not as responsive, but I really like the way that it performs. And with this 33 millimeters in the heel, for me as more of a heel striker, it feels really comfortable and cushioned when I land on the back part of the shoe. Unlike a lot of other shoes with aggressive heel rockers, th this doesn't really have that. So landing here is just a nice, solid, stable platform where it's not too squirrely and there's not too much movement going on when I land on the heel. Now, in terms of the compound itself, it's probably in between what we'd see from a softer shoe like a Asics Gel Nimbus or a Saucony Triumph and a firmer shoe like that Saucony Endorphin Shift or Adidas Audi Zero SL. It really is the best of both worlds where it has that comfortable cushion feeling when you're going slow, but then when you wanna go faster, it does have a little bit of that snap and responsiveness, especially because it's more flexible. As I mentioned in the midsole section, this is a really versatile shoe and that's because it's right in the middle of that soft firm continuum. So I've been using it for these 10 mile aerobic base building runs. Some days I might be running those more at a recovery pace. Other days I might be running them more at a steady-ish or marathon pace. And this thing just nails it for both of them. I've also been using the Hoka Mach 5 for those runs. And this differs from it in a few ways because that is a more rocker shoe where it pushes you off with that rolling. This doesn't have that feeling where it puts you up on your toes, but it does have a nice amount of energy return, more than I would have expected for a non piba foam. Now it definitely doesn't feel like a Piba, it's like something you get in the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 or Nike's Vaporfly, but I am feeling a decent amount of that compression and release energy return. Because of that, this has rocketed up to be one of my favorite daily training type shoes. Another thing I really like about the ride is I can feel this outsole gripping the road, especially because I've been running in that Mach 5, which doesn't have an outsole. All right, heading up to the upper. This has a nice breathable upper with really a lot of padding around the back here. And another thing I like about it, it there, there's no tricks to it. It's very solid, secure lockdown with padding, breathability. This colorway I have also looks great. A lot of the Nike colorways are really well designed. So if you're looking for a shoe that's good for casual wear, this would work really well for you. Now I know some runners have reported an issue with heel lockdown in these Nike daily trainers, including the Invincible and this one. I haven't had any issue with that. This is pretty secure. I actually leave it tied like this and I'll just slip it on and off. I do use the features socks, the light cushion version of those, and they do have a decent amount of padding around the heel areas. That could potentially be helping with creating a more secure feeling, but I think if you would run the laces through the last hole up here and do that runner's knot, 
you could probably eliminate any of that slippage. But again, I haven't experienced any of that. This feels like a really natural companion for my foot and I haven't experienced any of that weirdness out there on the run. All right, next up, let's look at the outsole. So this has one of the best, most comprehensive outsoles out there for a daily trainer. You'll see there's strategically placed sections of rubber, but they're really thick and they are, and they cover almost the entirety of the shoe. Whereas a lot of these shoes will have this midfoot section exposed, this one has it completely covered. Because of that grippy outsole, it gives that a really nice planted feeling. And I do anticipate that I can take this to 400 miles because of how thick that coverage is. All right guys, last, who is this best for? Now, if you're looking for a shoe that is not super rocker, but still has a decent amount of cushioning, I would highly recommend the Pegasus. Say you're coming from something like the Saucony Triumph and you want something with a bit lower stack, or you want a do-it-all shoe that's decently comfortable, but it's not gonna be too piled high with that marshmallowy foam, then the Pegasus is a good choice. I also think this is a great do-it-all shoe because again, it looks great for daily use, it looks great for gym use, it looks great for walking around town, and you cannot say that about all the different types of running shoes out there. I will say this is a true neutral shoe, but it does have, for me at least, some mild elements of stability. Just because of how flat the platform is, I don't feel that there's any squirreliness to it when I'm landing. So if you do need a mild stability shoe, I would try walking on this first to see if you get that same feeling. I also think you could get away with using this for long runs. I've been going up to 80, 90 minutes in this, no issues. It's not gonna be, again, as comfortable and cushioned as something like the Gel Nimbus, but if you don't want all that stack and marshmallowiness, then the Peg is a great choice. I think this is one of the most slept on under the Raider Daily Trainers out there, especially with it being under $100 for so many sale prices across the internet. This is an awesome choice. You can't go wrong with it. If it fits your foot, if you don't get any heel lockdown issues, then go ahead and pick up the Pegasus as your next daily trainer. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the Nike Pegasus. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.